have been here before, this is the entrance to the quarry. A lot of rock climbs around here with my tea case in its current condition. Probably not a good idea for me to be playing. Sometimes it's only in hindsight that you can really appreciate something that had been going on for quite some time. In this case, there were just a number of issues between a hard, strange clacking sound coming from my drivetrain under severe load in 4 low to getting stuck in situations I normally used to get out of easily to not feeling any kind of binding at all when my transfer case was locked and I was in a sharp turn or even more subtly going into a locked transfer case and not feeling that little change in the feel of the steering wheel. Slowly over time I came to appreciate that something must be wrong and then when I saw the video of my truck stuck in the snow, I knew that something was definitely wrong. Unfortunately, I couldn't have guessed just how severe the problem was. The Borg Warner 4494 transfer case used in Hummer H3s with the 4 to 1 low range option is notorious for having a failure of a fork. The original version had it as a nylon fork mine had long since been replaced. Typically they'll fail in locked mode and you can't unlock them. I fondly hoped that my transfer case had simply been locked in unlocked mode or stuck in unlocked mode. So I bought a couple hundred dollars of parts, scheduled a day at Brian's Auto in Peru, Illinois so that we could tear into the transfer case together and I was very optimistic that all I had to do was replace a bent fork, slap it back together, and get back on the trails. Flashlight is coming down on it. There we go. Yeah, that heat shield had it pinched. A couple of top tips for anyone attempting this repair. The transfer case on the H3 fits very snugly between the two cross members. It's actually not that hard to slide it out of there but you have to know to take the four studs that connect to the transmission fully out. You can't just take the nuts off the end. If you take those studs out, it's not too bad to slide it out of there. Now I make pretty extensive use of online forums to learn about projects like this before I dive in. And there was a good discussion on one of the H3 teams or groups on Facebook and I think it was the wisest people who said, you know, you don't really know what's wrong until you crack open the transfer case. I'd have to say in hindsight those people were right because while there were a number of possible reasons that the transfer case could not lock and could make that really horrific noise under severe load, I never would have guessed what it actually turned out to be. Well, that could have been a whole lot worse, huh? Yeah, that's all. That's all. No. Well, the good news is no ball bearings fell out or anything while we're in it. <laughs> So that's the thing about the actuator, I'll throw it lower range, high range. So that's why I'm thinking it's got to be that fork, that doggone fork. Yeah, that's what they say, they say the cam doesn't fail, right? Just that doggone fork. That isn't good. That's something that's got like rubber on the inside of it. 
That can't be good. Who's that? Hey, Tony, who's gonna get that box? What box? There's a box on top of that toy box right there. That cardboard box? And there's that filter the guy was talking about. Glad we bought that. Alright, so that chain tension slide broke loose, was rattling around in there. Smashed the oil inlet. Pump's probably been sucking metal. Well, the good news is the fork was okay though, huh? Yeah. That's really something. All right, I'm just gonna wrap this up. For those who said you won't know till you open the tea case, you win the prize. Tea case is out. Tea case is KIA. This little chain guide, at some point in its history, broke loose. We found it wedged up in here along with a lot of metal shavings and damage to the transfer case throughout. So, best not to rebuild this case with a standard rebuild kit. It's going to take two weeks to get it here. We're going to go ahead and just order a rebuilt transfer case. So we're out of commission for a couple of weeks at least. Definitely want to shout out to Powertrain Products company out in Maryland that rebuilds engines, transfer cases, etc. I was very relieved the guys sent us a complete kit, gaskets, etc. It did end up costing me all in with shipping and tax $3,100 for the rebuilt transfer case. But I did quite a bit of research and hands down powertrain products was my best option and they offer a five-year warranty at that price. So that was pretty nice. Now you guys who wheel in older trucks know that no project can ever be without some sort of drama. So Brian did mention to me after I picked up the truck, after he got the rebuilt transfer case back in there, a little problem with my sway bar. But uh, I noticed a little something missing in these pictures. On the passenger side, the sway bar is completely missing from the bushing to the uh, connection. So. This last photo is what it should have looked like uh, looking at the driver's side. No idea when I lost the link and the end of the sway bar. I don't remember hearing a clunk and I certainly don't remember noticing a difference in the handling, but it's never boring when you wheel in an older vehicle.